Okay. Um, this is a, the general support of check-in software uh, that is all of our docs. And there used to be a page that you went to when you went either to developers or to developer documentation here. Now this goes directly to this new documentation portal that we are working on. Um, it's clean, it looks nice, and hopefully we'll keep that not just in its looks, but in its content, keep it tidy and well organized and clear. Um, I will disclaim that we are kind of building this as we go along and we're moving in, a, in an agile, flexible, fast way. Um, and so we're letting ourselves make mistakes. What this means for you guys is that things might move around. Um, I know it can be a bummer when like URLs that you go to aren't there anymore. Please bear with us. It will settle down and it'll settle down on something good. So, you know, once we get through this, it'll be even more great. Um, but just to tell you a little bit about this, a lot of it right now is like uh, links out to existing documentation, our API documentation. Eventually, hopefully we'll bring all this in so it feels more unified. Um, one of the, what, what we're using for this is, um, GitHub pages, uh, which is GitHub's way of managing documentation. And there's some benefits to that, which I will talk about at the end. Um, one of the things that we have implemented is localization. So all of these things are available in Korean and Japanese and Chinese, and maybe one day more. Um, and uh, in addition to just bringing everything in here and linking out to things, one of the things that we're super excited about on the toolkit side is um, we've started writing a series of toolkit basics guides um, that will really take you step by step on uh, setting up a configuration for your project. Once you have a configuration, what you can do with it, making small edits, adding apps and engines. Eventually, we'll have one. We're working on one right now, actually, on um, file system management, schema, and templates, folders, all that, and one on taking over hooks. Uh, and how to do that. And then we'll have one on how you update your configuration. Um, so that'll be very cool. So there's like a lot of work on a lot of different fronts as far as cleaning up what we have, getting rid of old stuff, bringing things up to date and moving it to this really nice new page. Um, so we're really excited about that. Uh, one thing I'll mention last is uh, you'll see at the bottom of every page that there's an edit this document link. This is real and it is live and it is available to everyone. So when you do that, it'll take you directly to the file in GitHub. And what's nice about GitHub pages is that you don't even need to like clone the repo or anything like that. You can just edit it in line in the browser. And once you have made your edits, when you go to save, it will a, like give you not the option what you will be doing when you save is you'll be creating a new branch and starting a pull request so that'll come directly to us and if there's changes that like if there's something that's unclear that you want to help clarify or if you catch a typo or have a suggestion or whatever all this is a great way for you guys to communicate that back to us um, it's sort of extending the culture of community collaboration that we have with uh, the Shotgun ecosystem to our documentation. So we're super excited about that. Um, as I said, you can get to it from the main support site, but you can also just go straight to developer.shotgunsoftware.com and all of this will be here. Um, that's it about docs. Does anyone have any questions about that? I'll add in just a little bit about uh, that reorganization that Tanaz is talking about. We want to kind of restructure the docs so that they answer the question a lot more clearly of you're trying to do something and we try to organize the docs so that you can find it based on what you're trying to do rather than having to know where in Shotgun that particular kind of configura configuration lives. So. You know, if you want to react to something changing in Shotgun, then you know, that's going to be the kind of header. And then under that, action menu items and eventually webhooks um, and you know, integrations will be a little bit more of like, oh, here, we integrate with Maya. And you kind of don't have to know about Toolkit. But then when you get into that, you'll see, oh, I want to take over a hook. Here's you know, the guide instructions for how to take over a hook. So just trying to make it so that 
your path through the documentation is a lot more discoverable um, than what it currently is. Cool. All right, I will stop sharing my screen then. And with that, I'll hand it over to Rob. We never did. I actually never introduced myself either, but I can do that quickly. My name is Tanat Sassuni. If you guys don't know me, I am on the street team, which is our client facing team for Shotgun, but specialize in toolkit stuff. Um, and I will hand it over to Rob Blau, who is our product manager for toolkit, who's going to talk about the After Effects integration. All right. Hi, everybody. So uh, Rob, product manager for toolkit, uh, shotguns, integrations, APIs, all of that. Um, and this guy who, who's on screen who popped up um, is Den. He is here um, from the redesign group company that we work with in order to put together the uh, After Effects integration. So um, I'm going to be demoing everything. And then as we get into Q&A, or if people have kind of further questions on how everything works, he and I will be on for uh, doing answers. So all of that said, let me go ahead and share my desktop and start getting into it. Uh, let's move a couple of Zoom windows out of the way. All right. So we're really excited about the After Effects integration uh, for a couple of reasons. The first is that it's been on the top of the can we have this list for a long time. Um, and it's just taken a little while to get there. Um, there's a bunch of you that use After Effects all over the place. Um, and we were really looking forward to having it as part of the, the family of toolkit integrations. But one of the really great things about it is that we took this opportunity to make it so that all of the, the technology that we put in place for the Photoshop integration, um, this layer that lets you take a JavaScript API from within an Adobe application and a standard way of having an pan embedded panel inside that Adobe application, create a, a RPC layer so that you can actually launch a background Python process and interact with that Adobe product via Python, um, which is one of those things that all of a sudden opens it up to much deeper integration within a studio. Um, that logic we pulled out of Photoshop and turned into a reusable framework. Um, and we re refactored the Photoshop integration to run on top of that framework and the After Effects integration was done on top of that framework. So um, that's great. The code for these, these engines is actually much, much less than it was before. A lot of the heavy lifting moved into a place that's reusable. And um, it makes the barrier to entry um, much, much lower for future Adobe integrations. So that's something that we're excited about for us. And we also hope that you know, that's something that you guys take advantage of moving forward. So uh, After Effects, what does it look like in terms of the integration? I'll do a quick demo of it. So first off, it shows up. Um, so this is part of the, the ability for an engine to auto discover the software that you have installed. Um, if I go over to the software entities, uh, sorry, move you guys completely out of the way. Uh, over here. Um, now on sites that get spun up, uh, there's a After Effects engine put in there. It looks just like everything else. Um, all of the paths are blank because the engine itself takes care of finding the standard place where After Effects is installed and we'll go ahead and do that for you. So if you have an existing shotgun site, you can just create that software entity, um, in order to turn on that functionality and then the launching, um, kind of the, all the things that you'd expect as a given are there. Um, you hit the button and After Effects starts up. Um, and you know, if you do use the method of having multiple After Effects installed or you want to lock down the version of After Effects that are used, all of that is just part of the standard toolkit way of being. So you have all of those standard controls apply. And then once you're in After Effects, you get your panel. So, you know, here's the shotgun Adobe panel. Uh, this was, it used to just be the shotgun panel. Um, now it's the shotgun Adobe panel. The difference there is something that 
is important as you're kind of transitioning onto the new Photoshop engine if you're using the old Photoshop integration, and I'll get into that um, a little bit later. But now that you've got the panel here, um, all of a sudden, all of the fun toolkit stuff is available. So I can go ahead and start the work files app. Um, it works as you'd expect. You've got your After Effects scenes over here. I'm going to just go ahead and load up one that I've got, a incredibly dumb and simple comp um, in order to just serve as an example. So here we go. Nice little shot of the forest, one of the standard Adobe backgrounds. And now I can go ahead and let's just add a quick effect. I don't know. We'll do a blur. To that background. There we go. Beautiful. That is the effect that I want. So, you know, work files, I can go ahead and snapshot and use the snapshot history. Um, and then, you know, my point in time, I can just go back to, you know, various snapshots in a given version in order to try out things. Um, go ahead and all of the file saving functionality. I mean, this, this is stuff that I think everybody that I saw on the call should be pretty familiar with. All of the templating um, applies and all of the auto numbering of your scenes. All of that looks great. All right, so now I've got something that I, I like. Um, the loader is available and I can go ahead and take a look through other assets that are there. Um, there's actions, I can just add it to the current composition or just add it to the project. Um, don't want any of those things. Uh oh. I'm sorry, I'll do a quick restart over here. There's constantly the demo effect. So all of the standard tools that you'd expect um, to work with a toolkit integration are here and up and running. All right, I have a nice snapshot that I can go ahead and restore. Maybe go into my work file. All right. All right. So also, like I'm an artist who's working inside of After Effects. If I want to see the notes that are there against my task, um, use all of the communication features in Shotgun, browse around to see who else is working on the asset with me on that particular shot, all of that stuff is just easily available from within the panel. All right, my work is done, and I want to go ahead and push something out. So I can go ahead and just add to the render queue and choose my output format, my output movie, and do a quick render. This should be very fast. Um, and in the dev list, as we were leading up to the webinar, um, the question was asked about being able to manage the output modules um, and the format of output. Some of that is doable via hooks. Um, I'll go into kind of what that looks like and what the limitations are in terms of what the After Effects API even offers. Um, there's some cool things that you can do, um, but there's only a certain amount of control that After Effects itself even offers. So um, I'll just kind of go through the exact things that the API offers um, that limit um, the full automation that you can do. All right, so I've got my render. I've gone and looked at it. All looks great. So now I want to go ahead and publish. So there's a couple of publish hooks that are available. There we go. 
So, you know, you can publish your scene, um, you can upload for review, and you can go ahead and anything that's inside of the render queue, you can go ahead and publish those over to Shotgun. So, yeah, just very simple change over here. I can say added the blur. Make sure everything is good. Standard validations. Make sure that you're not going to be overwriting a publish that already exists. And if everything looks good, you can go ahead and do the publish itself. Um, and this can go ahead and you know copy the render off to a publish area. All of the standard things and the plugins that are available within our publisher are all here available for you. And if we look over through the details, you know everything went through great. There's a version that was created. There's a publish that was created. If I jump over, I can see that exact thing came through. And over here in the history, I've got, you know, my version, my new, uh, my new publish. I can go through and see the, the beautiful blur um, that has been updated in Shotgun, all available for review. So in terms of workflow, uh, that is what is there with the integration. Um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and lift the hood up um, and talk a little bit more about the framework that backs all of this. So the Adobe framework is now the thing that actually implements this panel. Um, and manages all of the communication with this background Python process that's running over here. That's actually the thing that is running all of the toolkit apps. Um, it uses JavaScript in order to introspect what API calls are available and make it so that you can actually create objects over on the, uh, the Python side and interact with them and just call back and forth. All of that stuff is actually running inside of After Effects, but over a, a remote procedure calls from, um, that connect that Python process through to it. In terms of the engine itself, it used to be in the kind of, this is the old Photoshop uh, implementation. There was this big plugins area that took care of all of the details of what it means to create a plugin for, in this case, it was Photoshop, but it works across any of the uh, Adobe apps that are, the platform is called CEP, um, Common Execution Platform. Um, and most of the uh, Creative Cloud applications do support that. So all of this, the logic to build that into a assigned plugin um, and a lot of the, well, and all of the RPC uh, details, and then a lot of the kind of specific details about how to handle windows and things that are specific of, you know, the of how to make these kinds of integrations work. All kind of are encapsulated and um, kind of got it in a startup and a engine um, that is now, it's still sizable, um, but that's mostly because of non-Adobe specific work that's going on. I can kind of jump into a little bit of what the framework is offering. So one of the things that the integration needs to do is make sure that the actual plugin is installed for after Effects, Photoshop, the Adobe app that you're integrating with. And that's a, a file that actually needs to be copied into a standard location. And whenever you start up Photoshop or start up After Effects, we do a check in order to see if the version of that plugin um, that you're supposed to be using, given the version of our integration that you're running, is up to date or not on the artist's machine. So all of that logic about making sure that you know, the right file is there, that the, we can check the version of it, and that we're copying over the updated one, if it applies, is just a, a simple call into the, uh, the framework itself. And then in the engine, uh, in order to use the framework, 
and all, all the details are here, code, code is available. But for the most part, what you're doing is connecting up some signals and slots in order to make sure that the logging is there uh, when the document changes, if you're kind of moving from tab to tab inside of Photoshop, that you can have the ability to communicate that through so that the context can update in response to it. Um, if the current context it needs to be communicated over um, or the state of the context has changed, that gets communicated over so that the panel itself can be updated. Um, and I mean, that's the kind of bulk of the heavy lifting. The RPC layer does need to be processed um, so that all of the messages that are, are flowing between After Effects and Python, the, the queue of those messages gets gone through. So you tie that into the, the queue application uh, that's running and that makes sure that everything is there and that it doesn't impact the uh, actual performance of After Effects. It's all gonna happen in, in, in the background. And then it's really a matter of going in and doing some custom logic. So over here in Photoshop, you know, if there's multiple documents that are there, um, there's a, a restart logic in, inside of the panel. And if you restart and you've got multiple documents, which one do you use? It makes sure that that's taken care of. Um, and because it's dealing with the specific panels, uh, some of the specific tabs inside of Photoshop, um, that's kind of here in the Photoshop engine, disconnecting all of this stuff um, when the engine itself is destroyed. Um, so if you are kind of switching to a different context and need to tear everything down and rebuild it, all of that is there. Um, and then just a lot of utilities on the engine side in order to make things a little bit easier. So on the Photoshop side, um, there's you know, the ability to export at the current document as a JPEG, as a utility method that's just coded directly against the, the Adobe API. Um, again, Python, all of this is just being translated over to JavaScript. Um, that's used in order to generate a thumbnail all of the things that an engine needs to know how to do, save, save to a given path, um, save as, find the, the version information about the uh, application that you're running in. All of those kinds of things are now much, much simpler and just offload to that framework. So, basically just wanted to do a quick tour through this so that if anybody is thinking about doing an engine um, against an, a new Adobe app, you can kind of see where the logic is implemented inside of the existing engines and use that as a template in order to move on um, and just get the new thing up and running. All of the kind of default hooks that are available also just do the same thing in terms of just simply you know, getting the active document um, and then using the APIs. So, you know, if you want to save, this is pretty much the, the Photoshop code that you use in order to do that. So that is the framework um, and the one of the new pieces, big pieces of capability that's there. I wanted to also just kind of start talking a little bit about the question I was asked on the, the dev list about controlling output settings. And I kind of have a little bit of code and I'll use it as an excuse to show off something that's pretty cool. So I can launch the Python console uh, that's available um, via the integration. And when it comes up, sorry, the font over here is, is not going to be overly legible, but hopefully as I switch over to the uh, my, my editor, you'll see what's going on. So via the API, you do actually get access to these things that are here in the render queue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a copy of that, get rid of it. So now we've got something that's editable over here and I'll grab the item and the output module from it. So this is what the code to do that looks like. And if I run that, I have an actual 
output module that in this case is going to be the QuickTime DV PAL um, 48 kilohertz, which is just one of the built-ins. So if I want to see all of the settings from that, there is a way of getting all the settings. Come over here, print that, and you can kind of see there's a JSON return value over here. In order to make that legible, I kind of just formatted it already. So you've got things like the output file path, um, and you do have the format over here, things that you could start configuring um, on publish in order to make sure that the right thing happens. So in terms of the output path, so I've got you know main two going over here. I'm going to just copy this and give it a different path. So come over here, bring the panel forward, run that, and you can see this changed to foo.move, which is what I said via the API. So you have control over the output path um, and can completely make sure that people are writing stuff out to a pipeline supported area. The place where it does fall down, unfortunately, is if I try to do the same thing and change the format. So in case of the format, After Effects gives me this lovely pop-up um, that just says that the format property is read-only. And they just haven't implemented the ability to override the format itself um, for, for the output module. So that is kind of currently the just the limits of what's doable via the API itself. Um, and unfortunately, that's not easy to work around. Um, the workarounds that we've thought of is if you have a format name that is something that you know should be used for a given publish, then when you are doing the publishing, this information is available to the validation step. So you could completely kick up a validation failure saying that uh, you actually need to go ahead and uh, update and use a, a given output um, rather than being able to output with the, the render that was used. And uh, what you could potentially do is in the templates, like where you'd want to load in a template, if you've got a, a export of that supported version. So, you know, my project export format five, version five, um, if that's what you're checking for and it doesn't match, it, it would be possible to print out the path to a, uh, the template for that um, and make sure that an artist has easy access to just like, you know, copy that in, load it, change the format and then go. But Unfortunately, those steps of being able to load a template um, are not exposed via the API. There's no way of automating that. And so validating the right name is kind of the extent of what's possible right now. And let's see, I believe that was the overview of the, uh, the integration that I wanted to go through. At this point, I can go ahead and just open it up for questions. Um, is there any extra details about that that people were curious about, about the doc site, or just in general, um, toolkit questions that are burning a hole in your pocket? Oh, Den. Hey, thanks. Uh, I just wanted to say, first of all, thanks for the opportunity for us to help out with this. This was very exciting for us. Um, for this particular problem, the output modules, um, you know, as, as Rob said, we don't have a great solution for it. Our, our workarounds were pretty much what he mentioned. Um, we have some ideas for this, the, uh, the next version of this, which involve uh, a little bit of a UI change, which would allow you to choose your output modules. And there is kind of a hacky way of being able to, to copy uh, templates from other projects and put them in this. So there is kind of a kind of a workaround path, but that's the best we could come up with. And and I'm actually kind of hoping uh, that maybe, you know, one of these a lot of actually very familiar faces in the in the attendees list. Maybe somebody there has an idea 
uh, for another approach that has just eluded us um, because this is one that from a workflow point of view really bothers me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I was a long time After Effects user from pretty much the beginning. And uh, uh, so I was very excited to be able to work on this because we want to be able to integrate Shotgun. Um, but, uh, you know, this is just one of those things that's going to bother me every time I use it. Um, you know, simply because I just know there's got to be a better way. And as any of you who have developed on After Effects know, fighting Adobe's uh, kind of uh, uh, what they give you to do um, is sort of part and parcel of, of, you know, of this job. So I would love to hear of other people's thoughts. Yeah. I do have to say playing around with it and finding out exactly what works and doesn't work via the Python console was a pleasure compared to other methods that I've tried in the past. So that was, that was a nice bonus. All right. Any other questions? You guys covered it so well. Yeah. There's nothing else that anyone needs to know. I'll also toss out if anybody has uh, topics that they'd want to suggest, um, as a next webinar for us, um, then you know, toss those out as well. We're in planning stages for what we're going to cover next time we get in front of you guys. So we want to make sure that we tackle the stuff that you want to hear about. Somebody did ask a question about Premiere, and I think that should point out in the process of developing this, we did not design it specifically to support Premiere. And uh, I, I've heard other people ask about um, uh, Illustrator and InDesign and being able to work with, you know, can we finally support, um, you know, shotgun, studios to use Shotgun for something other than after visual effects and animation? And I, I think the answer is, is definitely yes. But the, uh, you know, theoretically, the Adobe CEP that was built should support all their major current applications. Um, I wouldn't want to say anything about some of their newer uh, newer apps, but we were thinking about that as we were building it. Yeah, and I will say at, at this point, it's not the engine layer that would be a bunch of work for Premiere. It's the workflow layer um, that we're thinking a lot more carefully about before we would tackle Premiere, because at that point, we're not talking something like After Effects, which is more your traditional comp workflow, which we had well covered with Nuke and kind of understood the ins and outs, and it was a much simpler implementation. But with Premiere, we're starting to talk about editorial integration, which is something that we don't have great coverage for. Um, and where we do have coverage, like in, within Nuke Studio Hero, um, we're leaning heavily on that host application's ability to run plugins and execute things and you know do shot creation. Um, whereas Premiere, we would have to almost like recreate a lot of that functionality within new apps. So for us to do it would be kind of a bunch of heavy lifting because doing that in a generic way that multiple studios can use is a reasonably sized endeavor um, that we're tr we would like to do. We're just trying to figure out what the right timing to do it is. Um, but we are hoping um, that you know, this makes it a lot easier for people that do have some development resources and have some, you know, th their own bespoke editorial workflow. If you've got code there already, or, you know, you can just implement the, the specific shot naming convention that you have and, you know, your premiere conventions for knowing what shots correspond to what elements of the cut, um, that it's a lot easier to write that as a one-off um, for your workflow than it is to create a generic infrastructure around um, publishing and updating cuts. We had a, another question about the documentation site um, from Rob Hson, who was asking, he made a good point that we should mention the contributor agreement that goes along with these. So uh, let me share my screen again real quick, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, one piece that is necessary before we can receive contributions from you guys on this site is um, there's an individual contributor agreement. So it's a, not a bad idea 
to, uh, or corporate contributor agreement, depending on what kind of entity you are writing in on behalf of. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad idea to get this out of the way so that when it comes time to um, make a modification or an addition, you will have already gotten this all taken care of. So thank you for bringing that up, Rob. Yep, and I would say the all of the contents for the documentation system are under um, a pretty generous Creative Commons license. It's basically just, you can't reuse it on a different site, but all of the, the contents you guys are, you know, it, it's the standard Creative Commons license um, to try to be about as open as we can. Um, so in terms of contributing something, it's the license agreement is just making sure that you know, we're allowed to use the stuff that you submit back um, and that there's no you know, claims or IP or, or things like that that you're, you're sharing with us that would all of a sudden make ownership of the contents for the developer site uncertain. Um, also that readme that's linked to over there, we do have kind of just a style guide, a contribution guide for um, you know, just how to make the changes, um, what the formatting and style should look like and what kind of uh, mark markdown is available. Anything else? Any other questions? Stop sharing my screen. Um, okay, I will, as I always do, make a quick plug for the Shotgun Dev um, Google group. I put the link in the chat. Oh, I actually sent it to all panelists. Hold on, let me send it to everyone. Uh, the link is now in the chat. This is our uh, mailing list for technical users of Shotgun. There's kind of an overlap here. The, these webinars, the documentation site, the Shotgun dev list, it's all for people who are on the programmatic side when it comes to using Shotgun. Um, and that includes toolkit administration. We consider our pipeline configuration, like dealing with our pipeline configuration, a task that would land on somebody who has some programming chops. Um, or Yes, yeah, so please add yourself there. It's a really good collaborative community. Um, the conversations that happen there are awesome and you'll hear about upcoming webinars. Um, and again, if you do, as Rob mentioned, if you do have ideas for things that you want us to talk about in these webinars, we definitely want to hear them um, and we'll take them into consideration as we plan future ones. Uh, I think that's it, unless anyone's got anything else. <laughs> Not dead. I realized one other thing I, I forgot. I need to plug the developers who actually did the real work, Martin and Henry. Um, Martin especially has been fantastic and he's the one who did the real work digging all into this. So thank you, Martin. Yeah. Well, thanks to everyone who came to the webinar. Den, thank you for joining us. And we will see everybody again soon. Excellent. See y'all, thank you. Bye everybody.